Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me. This is International Quilt Weekend. Yesterday was officially International Quilt Day. Um, but uh, at the quilt show, we try to make it an entire weekend event with lots of fun, uh, door prizes, drawings, all sorts of stuff. Hey, you guys, come over here. Come see me, Barley. My puppies are in the room, and so they're in a new place, so it takes them a minute to get calmed down, but you guys will be okay. Yeah? Yeah, you'll be just fine. So, hey, uh, Mary Kaufman from New Mexico, Lynn. I'm going to say hello to a few of you just because I'm seeing who's popping in. Charlene, thanks for doing the Quilt Luminarium with me. Linda, it's great to see you. Paul Leger, hey, it's great to see you, Paul. Come visit me in Colorado again. It'd be great. Elena, Joanne, oh, and another Joanne, Margo, it's good to see you, Margo, I hope life is going well for you, Irene, oh no, it's my neighbor, Steve, Steve, don't you have anything better to do today um, than learn to quilt, uh, maybe not, Steve's going to start doing dreadlocks, I understand, um, let's see, Roberta, Rosa, Jane, Joanne, Wendy, Wendy Bain, hey, Wendy, so many of you guys I know, it's great to see you all joining me today. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you some fun tips and tricks. I expect that I'll spend, I don't know, close to an hour with you maybe. Um, these are some fun things. They're, they're presented kind of in a PowerPoint presentation so that I don't have to worry about the camera angles and things. But I think you'll enjoy it. I really appreciate you joining me. And uh, as we go through this session... If you do pop in with a question, um, some of them go by pretty fast, but I've got a, a team of a couple of people that'll kind of send those questions. So if you see me stopping and looking at my phone, it's probably because there's a, a question that needs to be answered. Um, and uh, so that would be great. So I see, I see so many of you, Lenore and uh, Cindy Johnson, it's great to see you, and Jeanette, all, all of you guys, thank you so much for joining me from really all over the world I see. So that is wonderful. And I know some of you are coming here from Facebook pages. Some of you are on the YouTube channel, but uh, we're celebrating today. So um, let me make sure I can get everything done here. I'm not gonna spend a, a long time just with chit chat because I do have a lot that I wanna cover. But as I cover some things, I'll come back, I'll come back to you live where you see me and uh, and then you may be looking at my camera, my, my, I think you are looking at my computer right now, as a matter of fact. Let me go back here. There I am. Is that right? So I think, I think you're starting to see me now. Absolutely. So I, yeah, I had my computer screen up. And I don't know if when this computer screen's up, if there's a little picture of me in the bottom or not. This is a program I don't use very often, so... So, so fun. All right, signal buffering. I, sh I should have pretty pretty decent uh, speed right now, so I'm not sure if it's my speed or if it's you guys' speed. Uh, choppy reception all of a sudden, so I'm not sure about that. Hello from Taos, New Mexico. Christine, I love Taos. We're going to be doing a photo tour. I'm going to talk about that. A little bit today as well going through Taos and Santa Fe all right so uh, South Africa and I'm so happy that you could be here today I'm mostly just looking at some of your comments to see having trouble with sound um, so I uh, Mary I won't be in Alamogordo this year it's not on my schedule I do go where I'm invited, and then when I can. But uh, I've not been in. I've not been invited back. But I'm not sure. I don't think it has anything to do with me. It's just been COVID and all kinds of things, and spreading the love around so that there's different people coming. I saw. Okay, yeah, great. So you saw me in the corner. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, and I'm still watching your comments just to make sure that things are better. But somebody said about. Um, audio um, I want to make sure you can hear me and hopefully you can I am going to I'm going to go ahead and move on you guys 
Um, and then, of course, if there's anything crazy, please just um, just shoot me a note. And if I don't see it, somebody somebody will. So I'm going to pop over to my computer screen, and I'm going to go here and just let you know. Here is a picture of me. Don't laugh too hard. In 1991, with my granny's sewing machine. And um, this was her machine that she purchased in 1955. Now, there's a long history and a story with that that I'm not sharing today. But this was my first uh, studio space. It was in my dining room on the left. You can see my dining room table. Um, and then you can see my one little stack of alpha uh, racks behind me where I had some fabric, freezer paper, iron, you know, all of those little things. And I still have this machine. I actually, when I do crank it open, I love this machine because it hums so beautifully. It just makes the best beautiful stitch. I love this old Kenmore sewing machine. So that's my, my Kenmore. And this is my first quilt, everybody. So um, I, I like showing this only from the standpoint it lets us all know that we start somewhere and we grow from there. Um, it was a fun quilt for me to make. I did this uh, with uh, no instructions other than a book. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any quilters. So I was learning by the seat of my pants, um, but I was very much hooked. Now, the same week that I started quilting in 1991, my dad started quilting. And this is a picture of my dad. And I, this is also probably 1992 now, um, and by the way, that's my dad on the right and me on the left, and um, this was at a miniature quilt auction that was going on in St. Louis, and so we had gone to the auction, but my dad started quilting the same week that I did, and he made his first quilt. Now, we didn't discuss this, by the way. My dad was going to do stained glass. I had told my parents I was going to make a shirt for going two-stepping in, Though I decided not to make the shirt. I started making a quilt. My dad decided not to do stained glass and decided to make a quilt. And this was without the, either of us discussing this. So that's kind of weird. But this is my dad's first quilt. All right, look at that. I'm going to give you a chance to just absorb that I said this is my dad's first quilt. And he didn't know any quilter other than me. And I was a baby quilter. His mother had recently passed away at the age of 85, 80, maybe 87. And when she was 85, she made each of her kids one of these broken star quilts. And my dad had a broken star quilt that he looked at her quilt and he said, well, if she can make that at 85, he was 65 and just retired, he could do that at 65. So my dad started making this quilt and he was 65 years old when he made that. So that's a pretty, pretty cool thing. Now, I want you to look at the center of this quilt, and I want you to notice it's pretty typical for, for a star quilt. The star in the center is twisting. The seams are not matching, but more importantly, it's just distorted. And my dad knew that, of course, but it was his first quilt. But a few years later, he really wanted to do another star quilt, and he wanted to have a perfect center. So here comes... Here comes my uh, dad's Lone Star quilt. This is a quilt that my dad and I did together. Uh, my dad pieced all of the diamonds, did the, the star entirely. I did the design and the applique and the quilting. And it is one of the few father and son quilts that we're aware of. And certainly the only one I know that has been exhibited and won prizes in international quilt shows. So this is my dad's Lone Star quilt. And I really, really, really love it. I only occasionally see a notice about video freezing, and that could be me. I don't have a doubt about that, although I have really good Wi-Fi now. But it also could be your stream. It's just the nature of the beast. So I'm just looking at any comments to see if that might change. It's a beautiful quilt. It really is. And then just an extra little show and tell I thought I would show you my most recent quilt. Um, this was made during COVID, and this is a quilt that I call Music of the Spheres. 
and I am so excited because I'm going to be teaching this method. I'm not going to teach this quilt. You are going to draw and design your own quilt with flowing lines and circles or however you want, and I'm going to teach you the techniques that I used to make this. So this is my Music of the Spheres quilt. I'm going to encourage everyone to go to my website and sign up for my newsletter, rickytims.com. You can look up at the top for newsletters, and that's how you get information about what's going on in my world. Yes, I'm very much involved with the Quilt Show, and the Quilt Show is, is sponsoring International Quilt Weekend, so you definitely want to be on the Quilt Show as well. But the Quilt Show doesn't send out all of my information. They certainly send out some of it, and I just want you guys to be able to stay connected with me as well. So, um, so if you're looking for classes and so forth that I might be doing, I encourage you to get on my newsletter and go from there. So that'll be a fun class. It'll be, it'll probably be a two to three week class. It's not going to be a weekend class, um, but I'll give you a chance to do that. So this is my fun, and I actually ended up making this, I quilted this, and by the way, I quilt on a domestic sewing machine. A lot of you don't realize that, but, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, but I do not have a long arm. So, uh, I'm just looking again real quick. Okay, so I'm going to go do that and get rid of that. So, all right, so you guys, um, there is my quilt, and I am looking forward to teaching you how to do this. It, it became a kind of a quilting sampler. I quilt on a domestic, and I wanted to do a lot of different variety of things on this, so that's, that's what I did on this. So that's my that. So you guys, now I'm going to go to what I'm here for, and it's just to share with you some eye-popping tips and tricks. Um, and I'm going to start with this fussy foot. Um, so you know that when you've got a, a typical foot with a notch on the side, your thread will slide right in through the notch on the side. But if you have a foot like a darning foot or a quilting foot or something that doesn't, you put it on and now you're sitting here trying to poke the thread down through the hole in the foot to get the thread where it needs to go. Well, watch this. If you will take the foot, ride it up the needle, pull the thread, and then put on the foot, you don't have to worry about <laughs> you don't have to worry about trying to poke it in. Let's do it again. So I've got to thread the needle. All right. Now take the foot, whatever foot you've got that doesn't have a notch on the side, just take it up. There you go. Pull out the thread and then put on the foot. There you go, there's tip number one, and I'm betting about three of you knew that little trick. That's a really fun thing, and then to try to poke that down, so there you go. All right, the next one, the next one is called the messy design wall. I know that many of us have like flannels or batting or something for our design wall, and I certainly do. And over a period of time, you get all these threads and these little cut bits and so forth on there. So what I do is I simply take my iron and my freezer paper, and I have a hot iron. I just plug it in, go to the wall, and start ironing with freezer paper. Iron the freezer paper to the wall. Thank you, Susan, saying tip number one is, aw is awesome. Now get ready, just peel back the freezer paper and the wall is clean. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh, and I get to be Vanna for a minute. How about that, you guys? Yay? How about that for a fun little cleanup tip? I know it uses a little bit of freezer paper, but it's certainly easier than getting those rollers that we buy that are kind of expensive with the tape and they roll like the like the clothes rollers, the lint rollers. Um, kind of a fun thing to do. Vicki, I love seeing that's great. I wish I knew that a long time ago because that's exactly what I'm hoping that these tips will be for you guys. So I'm seeing some of you say the video going in and out, and others of you it's streaming fine. So 
Um, I think it's just the nature of the Wi-Fi. You guys stick with us. Just stick with it. I think you'll still get the point. All right, the next one. You have your own needle threader. This is something that a lot of people don't know, but everybody has this needle threader. Did you know that the front side of your needle has a little groove in it? Now, it's almost microscopic. It's almost hard to see, all right? But watch this. If, and I'm going to do it three times. If you take your thread and you run your thread down through the groove on the front side of that needle, watch. Down, boom, right through the needle. Do it again. Down the groove, boom, right into the needle. One more time, down the groove, and boom, right into the hole. I, I'm telling you, we sit there and we're licking our threads and we're recutting and trimming and all of that. If you'll simply use the groove on the front of the needle, you'll almost every single time be able to get that to go in. Now, if your thread is frayed, I do go ahead and recommend that you just make sure there's a good cut, but that would be great. And yes, Vicki, that same trick on the ironing surface when you're Ironing board is getting really messy. You can use the freezer paper and just iron it to pick it up. <laughs> Christy, th thanks for saying best good for watching for the first two tips. That was, that's fun. All right, so let's go on to the next thing. This is called going in circles. Now, I'm going to be showing you the Bernina Circle Maker, but also every brand of machine has a circle maker. So uh, this is a circular attachment. It has a hole, one, one hole that slides over a screw hole. Every one of them comes on really easy. When I'm using a decorative stitch, I usually take the tension and turn it down a little bit. All right, now the crazy thing about the popping sound is I've turned off my volume completely, so I do not know why there's a popping sound. If you hear a popping sound, everybody, it's probably that whenever your comments come into this program, it makes a little pop notification. And I've turned off my volume, so I can't do anything more about that. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, you're going to have a little notepad, Wendy, so that you can chop these down. And this is being recorded, so it will still be streaming, so you can come back and watch later. So I turn my tension down for decorative stitches just a little bit, you guys, not crazy, and pick any decorative stitch on your machine. All right, that'll, that's the number one. So you take the circular attachment out of the box. They even give you the screws. They give you two screws because they think you're going to lose one. They give you the screwdriver so you can do it. Make sure that the feed dogs are clear and simply screw the one screw through the hole onto the plate of the arm of the machine. And again, like I said, every brand may be slightly different, but they all function kind of the same. On the left side, there is a, a slider that goes into notches, and the notches are pretty firm so that it will stay in a notch. On that slider is a pin, a pointer, like a thumbtack, and it's got a stopper on it so that you can avoid, you know, poking your finger. In this case, I'm going to do a small project on a small square, I'm going to find the center by folding it in fourths. Now I'm going to place it on my Ricky Tim Stable Stuff Poly, and I'm going to use some tape on the back side right where the hole is going to go because I really want this to stay stable, and as it goes around and around the pin, I don't want that hole to start getting bigger, so that's why I'm using the tape. Now I push the the thumbtack, so to speak, right through that crease that I created. Put the stopper back on. If you lose the stopper, pull a eraser off of a pencil and use that. Now then I'm using an open toe foot, I'm using a decorative thread, and I'm simply going to start stitching. Notice that I'm slightly stroking. Patricia said she tried the threading trick and it worked. Woohoo! That's awesome. And you can see that it just goes click, click, click right around and look at the beautiful stitches. Now, what will not necessarily happen is the pattern may not perfectly match when it gets back to the beginning, but you've got ways to, ways is, you've got ways to disguise that as we go. But I want you to look at this little project that I did that uses this technique. 
And there, if you look closely, you'll see on one of those scallops, it's not a perfect scallop. But that's okay. It looks fine to me. If I look at this on my wall, I'm, I'm happy with it. And I could have put applique over that if I wanted. And here, if you look at the green little swoops, notice that there's a skinny one right next to the big ones. And that's just because that's the way it turned out. I don't think that's a big problem. So with the circular attachment, I can actually quilt in a circle by putting the sandwich. This is a really small quilt, by the way. Um, I can put this back on the pin after it's sandwiched, and I used a straight stitch, and I did those perfect circles to do that. And here's what this quilt looks like. You can also use your needle position and move the needle position if you need to make a slight adjustment because you're on those notches, and if you go to one notch and it's too far, and you go to another notch and it's too near, then you can use the needle position then to move that needle to exactly where you want it to be. So I love the circular attachments. Those are great and fun to use. And here's my good friend Libby Lehman using this. She ended up putting um, her, uh, she ended up layering two of my hand dyed fabrics. One of them was magenta and purple and the other was kind of yellow and orange. She layered those, and then she did a straight stitch. If you look at the outer ring, you can see that there's a straight stitch. There's also three circles of straight stitch. Look at the inner circle. It's been straight stitched down. And then with scissors, she went in and cut away the ring, and she cut away the outside of the circle. And now with decorative stitches using the circular attachment, you can stitch those down with beautiful decorative stitches and here is a quilt that Libby made using that circular attachment. Every brand of machine has their own circular attachment, so you just, it's an accessory, so you'll want to go to your dealer or look online with your brand of machine and look for their circular attachment or circular, uh, you know, whatever it's called, but it's for making circles. Um, I, I'm, you guys are still talking about the popping, and yes, there is about four or five different streaming locations that are uh, offering the comments, and all of those comments come into me. So if you're watching on one area, yes, the popping could be from somewhere else. So there is... <laughs> Susan's also... Some of you are sitting in your sewing room trying all this out. You know, you can make a, a makeshift circular attachment as well. Uh, if you wanted to use some tape and a, a thumbtack or something, you could certainly make that happen. All right, let's talk about the couching foot. Um, Bernina has a free motion couching foot now, and since it came out, many other machine brands have also come out with a free motion couching foot. And that's important. There's a difference between just a regular couching foot that you put in and you do a zigzag stitch over and a free motion couching foot. So take a look at this because this is really fun. The free motion couching foot is going to allow you to do some beautiful uh, embellishment and it looks like it's attached invisibly. That's the crazy thing because there's not a zigzag going over the top. Your cording comes through the side of the foot and down through a really small hole, you may have to use a lot of spit to get it through that hole. Now then, I have my cording in a cup off to the side. You don't see it, but it's off to the side. I have my thread that's uh, kind of matching. I have kind of a purple variegated thread. I still have my Ricky Tim Stable Stuff Poly Stabilizer underneath. And then, just with regular thread and bobbin, my feed dogs are down. I'm going to do free motion stitching, and because the hole on the foot is small, and because the cording that I'm using fills up that hole, then therefore I'm able to do this free motion couching foot. If your cording is too narrow or too thin, this will not work. So this is for yarns, uh, nylon cordings, Things like this that allow you to create some very cool things.
I have turned down my volume completely, you guys, so if there are pops that are happening, I have no more control over that, and I am really sorry, you guys. Just, just go with it. There are worse things in life. I'm thinking right now of our dear friends in the Ukraine, and uh, they're, they wouldn't be so concerned about pops. Uh, we'll try to figure it out for the future, but I've done everything I know to do, and I don't want to really stop the demonstration to try to troubleshoot a problem. I hope you understand that. I think that is a number 43 foot, but it is called the free motion couching foot. So in the event that I've told you the wrong number, but I do believe that this is foot number 43 for Bernina people. The 153 machine should be fine, uh, Polly. That's, that, that is still not the old, old, old style feet. That's the normal, regular, new style feet. So I do think you'll be fine. But, you know, your dealer is going to help you better than I am. So, all right, very good. If the pops are gone, then yay, that's exciting. So here's a quilt that I made that uses that free motion couching foot, and you can see all of the embellishment. This is called Lifelines Number 3, Can Something Come From Nothing? And if you look in the quilting on this in the dark area, you can actually read, Can Something Come From Nothing? And then the upper right says, Can We Stop the Hands of Time? The bottom left says, The Road of Life Moves Forward and the past is left behind. So, I do love this free motion couching foot, and you guys, here's the thing, if you're not super great at free motion, the other thing is your stitch length here is not gonna be seen. As long as you can make some, some generally beautiful swirls or swoops or whatever you wanna do, you're going to find success the most important thing is that your yarn or your cording has got to fill the hole on that foot. Uh, things like my Ricky Tim's Razzle Dazzle thread is too fine and too narrow to do that. So, kind of a fun thing, all right? This is another fun one. This is something that you can do on any machine with no special attachment whatsoever. So, get ready for this. This is called Sew Twisted. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of tell you before I go to the video, I'm going to take, and my, my machine is threaded normally, a regular thread in the top, a regular thread in the bobbin, and I'm going to use an open toe foot. So the open toe foot allows me to see in there, and on this case, I'm going to use razzle dazzle thread, but you could use something like a wool thread or a specialty thread or even very small silk ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to again use my stable stuff poly as a stabilizer underneath on the back side because we need to stabilize this so that the fabrics don't draw up. The thing about the open toe foot is that it's not only open but it has a groove, a, a tunnel in the bottom that allows this to work. So here's the process. You take a forward and back stitch and jump over the razzle-dazzle. Now, the razzle-dazzle is probably 18 inches long. I lift the foot and cross and take two stitches. I knee lift, lift the foot and cross and take two stitches. Lift the foot and cross and take two stitches. Now, I'm going to speed this up a little bit so that it can just go a little bit faster but if you have a longer or a fatter cording, you might take three stitches. If you have a really uh, wide ribbon, you might take four stitches. So it just depends, but you get the idea is that I'm crossing every time I stop and look at this wonderful embellished chain stitch that's coming out of the back side. OMG, you want to go home and try that. See that? Oh my gosh, that is fabulous. So this is how I made some really wonderful machine-created vines 
on top of the applique to create this wonderful uh, vine and leaf effect. And I couldn't have done that with fabric very easily. And this is exactly what I did for this little critter that's sitting in a little buttercup or something. His feet are on applique, that very fine applique, but then the applique fizzles out and I continued using this little technique that I showed you so twisted. And I just got a confirmation that indeed the machine free motion couching foot is number 43. So that's a pretty cool technique. Now, I also want you just to notice as a little side note here, right where those start, I generally see the thread that's holding it all together. So in this case, I came down, uh, I came in with some little tiny seed beads and I did some little beads right at the tip of each of those to add an extra little embellishment. <laughs> Are you guys having fun yet? I hope so. I, I hope so. Peg's saying she used that on the Raja quilt. Yeah, those are pretty small things. All right. So the frog stitch. Rip it, rip it, rip it. Now, a lot of people really don't rip out seams. They get the seam ripper to rip out seams. I want you to watch this. I've done a little bit of paper piecing, and this is a fun technique, a fun technique that really works because uh, with paper piecing, if you make a mistake, like I've done two yellows in a row, uh, two golds in a row, well, I have to take off that second gold because I want to go blue, gold, blue, gold, blue, gold. So this is how I'm going to take this out. Number one, I'm going to get some scotch tape, some regular cellophane tape. And I'm going to put that tape onto the paper over the stitch I just sewed that was wrong. So if I've just taped over it, how can I possibly pick that out? Well, there's a big mystery. Well, here's the real problem. When you pick out paper piecing seams, the perforated paper wants to fall apart. So I've taped it together now so it won't fall apart. And now I can pull the paper away from, I'm gonna have to get my glasses for this, I'm going to pull the paper away from the project. Just trying to get my fingers in there. Once I get it started, you'll see better, okay? Now, I'm pulling the fabric from the paper. The thread is tearing the paper, but the paper is already taped together, so I don't have to retape it later. So there's number one. Woohoo! When you're paper piecing and you make a mistake, that's what you do. Now, for ripping out the seam, you better watch carefully because I'm not going to get a seam ripper. Watch fast and watch, don't even blink. One, two, three. Boom. Woohoo! Right? And more. Woohoo! Right. <laughs> so, you really can, if you do that really super fast, you do not need to get a seam ripper out to remove that seam. Judith. I see Judith has made a comment that she's a quilter. Saw me on Simply Quilts making a convergence quilt. I believe it might have been a caveman tulip, but nonetheless, you've been quilting ever since. I am about to do a convergence class online in April, and I hope that you guys will join me. It's two days long. I'll give you that information here in just a moment. Birthing a quilt. Now, this is a technique that I use to do small art quilts that need a fake binding or just to finish it without having to put on a binding. So take a look. Number one, I'm going to sew the quilt top, so this is maybe, I don't know, it's maybe 14 inches by 9 inches or something like that. I'm going to sew that onto batting, and if you look really carefully, you'll see that it's about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I've sewed the quilt top to the batting. <laughs> Teresa says, I'm crazy, and yes, I am, and I claim it, and I accept it, and that's all good. It works for me, and it saves time. 
Now I'm going to tear my backing near the top. So I've got two pieces of backing. I'm going to sew those together, but I'm going to backstitch, leaving five or six inches in the middle that are not sewed together. I also probably use about a half an inch seam allowance because I want it to be a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier right here. I don't need a quarter inch seam. But you can see along the top there that I have omitted sewing all the way across. Uh, Vicki, now everybody's so worried about me tearing this strip. Did you see that I was doing paper piecing? And on paper piecing, I can press, I can do ironing, and so no, if I was doing some very meticulous um, bias seam on a half square triangle that was really measured and careful, I would not rip that out. But if I'm using strips, those strips were even torn. They weren't even cut to size. So it's not going to become a problem. I've done that for years and years and years on show quilts. So all of those things that are making you, you know, hyperventilate right now, I'm guaranteeing you they actually work if you do it fast. And in the event that I was to tear a strip, I just go back one more and do it again. But I rarely, rarely, rarely have ever uh, torn a strip. My stitch length is about a 2.0. It's not a 1.5 or a 1. It's, it's a reasonable stitch, and it will rip out if you use the exploding technique where I did it really, really fast. All right, back to this. I'm now going to show you that I have an opening on the back of my fabric. I'm going to put the good side of my quilt top, the right side of my quilt top, which is sewn to batting, face to face with all of this. And now I'm going to stitch inside the previous stitch line. So the lighter red is my first stitching, the darker red is my second stitching. And now I simply need to trim this to about a quarter of an inch and notice that it's a wonky shape. This technique allows you to have straight edges or wonky edges. Either one will work just fine. And now you clip off that corner because so you don't have all the extra bulk in the corner. And then you turn it through the opening. And then as soon as you've turned it, your quilt is now got batting. It has a finished edge. The one thing it doesn't have is quilting. So now it's time to quilt it. So I end up, there's the opening. Maybe use a little bit of glue base to close it shut. Iron it shut so that it's dry. And then do your quilting. Your quilting is the last thing. Now on this particular quilt, notice that there's what looks to be like a binding. That is a mock binding. Because I put a small frame on before I actually did all of this process. And by having a small frame, once I sewed it all together and turned it, I have this thing that looks like a binding and I stitched in the ditch to make it even look more like a binding. So, and on the back side, you don't usually have any handwork because your quilting is going to close up that opening. And then if you put your sleeve on the top, nobody even knows how this was done because it's hidden by the sleeve. Yeah, you're going to have to watch this one again, but that's all there for you, and you can replay and rewind. I'm going to just leave this for just a second. I'm going to go back to, well, exit, and then go back to here. So do you guys, you see me now? I just wanted to come back and say hi and give y'all a minute to breathe and ask any questions if you want. Sally, it's good to see you here. Yes, indeed. And I learned this crazy birthing a quilt technique way back in like 1997 when I went to England and some wonderful quilters there showed me that technique and I thought, boy, that's a time saver on miniatures, on small quilts that you're going to give away as gifts, on table runners, placemats, things like that, that you don't want to spend so much time on a binding. It works great. All right, well, I'm not seeing any pressing questions. So I am... <laughs> Patty's worried that I see a sad guy. It's okay, no worries. I'm going to go back to the computer 
and I'm going to go back to this, which is the loco lasso. There are times when we do certain things, like in this case, I'm doing bobbin quilting. I have razzle-dazzle in the bobbin, and when I finish, I just want to stop, raise the needle, and then I want to cut the threads. I'm going to flip this over so that you see the, the, the bobbin thread, which is now going to be my top thread because I was working upside down. Thread a needle, but don't put any knot in it. And with the eye of the needle, you have to use a thimble, but with the eye of the needle, go into the layers and then go up right where you want to pull those tails. When you back the needle off a little bit, you'll see that you've got a little lasso and you can grab this lasso, reach in and simply grab that tail, lasso it and pull. And this will all go into the inside of your quilt and you're not trying to thread that very frayed crazy end of a thread tail through an eye of a needle so once again I've gone in with the eye I'm coming back I grab the lasso then I'm going to reach through the lasso to grab the thread tail and pull it to the inside these videos that I'm doing, this live that I'm doing today is, um, is going to be staying on my Facebook page, on the Quilt Show Facebook page, and on the uh, Quilt Show YouTube channel. So you can watch this again. It might even be a bit smoother um, on the playback. So if there's any trouble, sometimes that's automatically corrected. And you guys, yes, I see someone saying congratulations on teaching Quilt Luminarium in Paducah. Um, Peg, thank you. She said it's the best class I ever took. You guys, I'm doing that for two days in Paducah. If you are coming to Paducah, may I please invite you to join me for Quilt Luminarium. This session that I'm doing today is one small portion. I'm only doing a portion of that session. But these are the kind of things that I will teach you in two days. So... All right, so now I know that you all love to mark your quilt, and I'm being facetious because nobody loves marking a quilt. But I want to share with you my technique for doing intricate markings, and this is something that you can do and be much more confident in your quilting. All right, so get ready for this. This is also available on my grand finale DVD. I do sell it at rickytims.com. Please head on over, and it's over two hours of fine machine quilting and finishing techniques. It's not about patchwork. It's not about applique. It's about trapunto, bobbin quilting, marking the quilt, binding the quilt, uh, piped bindings, scalloped bindings, all kinds of wonderful things. This is available at rickytims.com. And this next segment is on that video. So I have drawn on freezer paper the design I want for my border. This is a sample, so it's not a full quilt but it is on freezer paper. Now I'm going to use Ricky Tim's Stable Stuff Poly. I'm going to go to the copy machine and I'm going to copy my border design onto the Stable Stuff Poly. Stable Stuff Poly is a polyester based stabilizer, not a paper sta stabilizer. It took me three sheets to do this and I run these one at a time through the printer I now need to just have an overlap of about a half an inch and put the design together. A glue stick will help you put this design together. Again, this is on my grand finale DVD. Repeat as necessary until you have the entire design assembled. Now I need to position this on my quilt but it doesn't go on my quilt. It's going to go on the back of my quilt. I also need to position it accurately. So I'm going to, and when I say back of my quilt, I mean back of my quilt top. Because I can see the contour of that seam, I'm gonna cut this so that it fits. There's the top, but I'm gonna flip the quilt top over and I'm going to put this design on the back. I can use some spray based or a little bit of glue stick, but you can't see the design on the front. Put water soluble thread in your top and bobbin. Then machine quilt on the lines 
and your water-soluble bobbin thread is marking your quilt top. Now listen, people. You're going to say, but that takes time. So does tracing. And tracing will not improve your quilting. But if you do this technique that I've just shown you, where you actually stitch with water-soluble thread, you're going to practice quilting before you actually have to quilt the quilt. So that is, for me, a really, really win-win-win situation because you are going to practice quilting. And if that was the corner of a quilt, I would have done that four times. I would have probably done it about the same speed as tracing. And with tracing, either the marks don't come out or they rub off while you're free motion quilting. So using the water-soluble thread, that does mean that my quilt is going to get immersed in water to dissolve those threads. But most of my quilts, like my show quilts, those quilts end up being um, all done. Uh, I want to go back to the camera. Here's my ecam. Trying to get back. Am, oh, there I am. I'm back. Yeah. Yay. Um, I, ended, I end up blocking my quilts by immersing them in water. And so that's something that I really, that I really have to really highly recommend is that you um, block your quilts. And part of that is immersing them in water. Now, yes, of course, there are quilts that are going to have fabrics or techniques or methods that you can't do this because you're not going to get your quilt wet. But most of my quilts, uh, like the one behind me, it got wet and it got blocked uh, so that it's nice and flat and looks really good. So what kind of questions do you guys have for me? It probably takes a second for those questions to come in, but I'm opening the floor up for questions. While I do that, let me just tell you about two things. I have a convergence quilt class happening on April the 9th and 10th. I believe it's the 9th and 10th. And that is located at letsquilttogether.com. Register now if you want to buy some multicolored hand-dyed fabric. I do have a little bit. There's still plenty of time to register. And the class is not 100% full, but it is filling. So if you guys would like to spend two days with me on a Saturday and a Sunday making a convergence quilt, the last class I did about two months ago was outstanding. The, the, the images, the quilts were just superb. Please take a look. Go over to letsquilttogether.com and that's where I do my online classes. Um, I also want to share, I'm looking at the questions so they're not quite yet. Um, I have this quilt that's called Fleur de Vie. And I have kits for this in pre-order mode. You guys probably are going, no, I could never make this. I don't know. That's just beyond my capacity. This quilt will be easier to make than most quilts where you have to be accurate with your quarter inch seams and your perfect points. The way I do a Rhapsody quilt is a way of using stay stitching and registration marks that may look difficult, but it's more accurate and easier than your traditional style of quilting. If you are ready to make your next big, wonderful, amazing legacy quilt, you know, the one they're going to fight over someday, this is that quilt. I have kits in this colorway and also in this colorway. One's called Periwinkle, one's called Bordeaux, and I would love for you to get that. You can get those at rickytims.com. So go to my website, look for kits in the online store, pre-orders, because we're, I barely have enough uh, opportunity to dye fabric these days. So these kits are being dyed to order, and it does take a little time. This project's going to start in May. Yes, I will have a pattern that is a standalone pattern that will also be available in May. But I encourage you to get this beautiful hand-dyed fabric, both in Periwinkle or in Bordeaux. I would love for you to join me on that project. I will be doing some video tutorials to watch at your own convenience, and those video tutorials are not so much how to make the quilt as it is how to do the techniques that are going to let you make the quilt so easily. 
Took both the convergence classes. Oh, Joanne, thank you. Yes, I remember you being in those classes. Um, I did the convergence quilt class, and then we did a divide and conquer class, and that was only available to those that took the convergence class. Um, I use, um, of course, my hand-dyed fabrics. They're already washed. They're already rinsed, and I do recommend that you use Synthropol because the chemicals in Levita water may be slightly different than the chemicals in Michigan or New Jersey or wherever you live. So I do encourage you to pre-wash your fabrics one more time, even though we have done a lot of, of pre-washing of the fabrics and getting them ready for you. Question, where do I wash my quilt? I do it in a, I just put it in my washing machine and I put some water in the tub and I don't even do much more than just let it soak in the water and then I spin dry it and go, I don't feel like my quilt is dirty so I don't need to wash it at that point. In the event that I ever notice any bleeding, I use Synthropol and get rid of that because Synthropol is what's going to get rid of all of that. Yes, the blocking of the quilt is covered in my grand finale DVD, how I put it in the washer, how I lay it out, how I block it. And by the way, I do not square my quilt before I quilt it. I square my quilt after I quilt it. And all of that is on the grand finale DVD. I see a lot of questions. I can't urge you enough. If you don't have that DVD, grand finale is available at rickytims.com. Uh, how large? Oh, the uh, the Fleur de V quilt is 80 inches by 80 inches. So the one behind me is about that same size. So if you want to get a sense of scale, that's about an 80 inch quilt that's behind me. Do my hands ever ache from machine quilting? My hands don't generally ache, Maureen, but my back often does. I do think I have to have good posture. I try to stay sitting up. It's easy to start slumping over, and it's also easy to get really tense. And I do try to cover some of those techniques in the grand finale DVD on just how to stay loose and relaxed so that you uh, are not fighting the quilt and that it will move easy under the machine. It is a DVD about domestic uh, free motion quilting. A lot of the tips and tricks would be applicable for long armors. Uh, class on blocking quilts, that sounds like a fun thing I could do. Absolutely. Actually, I just did a class called Finesh, uh, Finesse, Finish, Finesse, and Photo, and that class uh, did cover blocking, so I will be offering that class again. Again, that's at letsquilttogether.com. That's my teaching website. I'm looking at other questions. I am also doing, you guys, um, I am doing a tour of the Desert Southwest. It's mostly a photo tour but we will go to a, a couple of quilt shops and I would encourage you if you want to do something, if you're ready to travel and you've not been to the Desert, desert Southwest, um, you can reach out to me uh, on my website and get information. I can send you tour information on that. That's coming up July 17th through 23. We're going to Taos. Well, we're starting in La Vida, which is where I live. And going to the sand dunes, we'll go to Taos, New Mexico for two nights. We are going to take a train ride on the highest uh, narrow, narrow gauge rail in the United States, maybe in North America, actually. And then we're going to um, go to the Taos Pueblo, which is the lar longest continually inhabited dwelling that's in Taos. And then we'll spend two nights in Santa Fe. And on the Friday night, the Santa Fe Opera is playing Carmen. So that's going to be a fun optional thing that you can book on your own. But I would love to see you on this tour if you're interested. That would be great to have you. Um, Judith asks, when do I use Synthropol and when do I use Retain? I can answer that question. I never use Retain and I only use Synthropol. Um, I'm not so much interested in setting my dyes, which I think are more for commercial fabrics. I use Synthropol to get rid of any dye that didn't bond. The Synthropol is like the police for here's a renegade dye molecule and it's going to be like Pac-Man and it's going to come and get that undyed, unbonded molecule and it's going to take it away to, to jail. And so I use Synthropol because I want to get rid of anything that didn't bond in the fabric and I do believe that Retain is just the opposite. It wants to put things in and make them stay. 
So I am always using Synthropol. That's just me. Uh, it's not right or wrong. I'm just letting you know how I proceed through my process. Oh, Annabelle, it's good to see you. Um, the timing was wrong in the email for the UK. Um, I'm not sure about that because I didn't create the email. Well, maybe I did. I don't remember. It wasn't me, but I'll take responsibility. The bottom line is that it is available. It will be recorded, Annabelle, so you can see it as soon as we're done here. You'll be able to see this. No worries. Kentucky. Yep, I'll be in Kentucky, Shula. Would love for her to see you there at Paducah. Do the quote luminarium with me. So, can you say again where we get the flower kit? That is at rickytims.com. That is on the screen right now as the newsletter sign up, but that's my website. My personal website is rickytims.com, and I have an online store, and one of the sections in the store are kits. And so the pre-orders of those kits, now they're hand-dyed people. Hand-dyed fabric is more expensive, but even with all the fabric I'm providing for this kit, there's still a discount on the fabric. So even though it may, you may go, wow, that's an expensive kit, I just want you to put it in perspective of it'll be one of the most amazing quilts you've ever made in your life. You go, I want to introduce you to everybody. You're all over there sitting there. So let, hey, everybody, you goes here today. If y'all haven't met Hugo, I want you to meet him. Hugo is doing a, a, a learning to make a quilt on camera. That is also at YouTube. That's on my Ricky Tim's channel. But this is Hugo. And uh, yeah, all right. So Hugo, so tell everybody uh, a little bit about your, pro your project that we're doing together. And by the way, where do you put my quilt? Where did I put your quilt? I'll put it over there. But 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 we can't let anybody see it yet that's the thing i'm trying to protect your project <laughs> yeah so almost finished i think it's 90 percent. yeah we're ready we're down to the final borders on his quilt now right now we only have five episodes that are posted oh look look what he's found look. he's got rosie look there hey rosie hey sweetie <laughs> yeah this is his thing is to pick rosie up and she yeah. lets him she just lets him. Anyway, Hugo's making a quilt, and you're having fun, I think. You're yeah. not lying to me about it. No, no, no. Yeah, so. It's very challenge for me. Yeah. And I think you all know that Hugo is a chef, and he's amazing. So I, I yesterday was his birthday, and I made his birthday cake, and, well, was I, good. I thought it was good. But it was good. <laughs> anyway. It's great. Well, I hope you guys will follow us on Hugo Makes a Quilt. Um, that's another way to do that is to be on my newsletter because we're doing that. So there I'll see. They're all saying hi to you now. Hi. <laughs> oh, Peg, it is time to use that fabric. That's all I can tell you. She bought a bunch of fabric at a quilt luminarium. You know, I don't have any live luminariums. You guys that they're they're gone partly because of covid and partly just because of the logistics of making them happen but um seriously um if you can make it to paducah that that's one of my few available opportunities so christine is watching you on youtube it's kind of fun because well yeah it's it's kind of fun yeah because we're doing we're trying to make it entertaining yeah. well I was not expecting that, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's you will see the evolution the first episode till now. You will see me cutting and well, literally, we show your very first cut. We show your very yeah, first threading of a needle. And did you saw my hand? Yeah, Next. I saw he had his his non cutting hand was like right in front of the cutter, oh and I'm gosh. like you now. Yeah. So he but he's learned, and yeah. you'll see that learning happening. So two things: if you know anybody that's looking to to quilt and they've never done it, following along with Hugo is a great way to get started. And then if you are an experienced quilter, I think that you will have fun just watching, and more importantly, you might have some advice. So you yeah. can always add a comment. And we can consider how to do that. So a lot of people have already seen these first five episodes, Hugo. They've watched all of them so far. 
Yeah, I think the other one is who's coming. It's going to be more fun. <laughs> yeah, he, he learns a lot. So right this moment, his quilt top is He's done there. minus the borders. And no, you can't see it because you have to follow along and see. But we started filming like that back in December. Yeah. Like soon after you arrived in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of shy in the ah. beginning Be because I it's the first time with the cameras and and trying to cut it and sewing and I don't think you come off as being shy at all but but I'm sure you felt that but way it's kind of different you know people uh, I was get I, I was more I, I'm more comfortable cooking <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I'm more comfortable I mean I do cook I've been cooking for my whole life but I'm more comfortable in the studio making music or uh, making quilts yeah, yeah. So we, we we all have our passions wow that's great you know, um, you guys, I see a few more comments, but we have spent our hour together um, and I have enjoyed it immensely. I hope that you've enjoyed these little tips and techniques. Um, and I do hope that you will either join me for my convergence class, that you'll check out the Florida V quilt. Cause I will I would, do the Florida V quilt. Yeah, Hugo is going to do it and he's a beginner. So yeah, I, like um, the colors. I, I bet they're going to watch you make it too. Yeah. So you guys, if you want to do that, get get the kit ordered now because it we because they are made to order, and Ellen is working part time. But at least we have the fabrics, and I think it's a good use of fabric. You're not going to be wasting it. It's going to be a really good use. So you guys, thank you. We hope to see you again really soon. Happy quilting day yesterday, and happy quilting weekend this weekend. And uh, thank you for spending your time with with us today. Okay? God bless you all. Thanks. Bye-bye.